Number one. Okay, listen up, guys. Number one, I wanted to speak to you about. I got a little bag here of goodies, and I want to ask you of something to help me out here. And what I would like you to do for me is, let's see, if I was going to plant a seed, you guys, anybody here plant seeds? Yeah. What, what do you grow? <laughs> what do you grow? <laughs> when you plant? <laughs> really? Tomatoes, tomato plants. Do you really? Awesome. Yeah. Tomato, that's a pretty healthy. Um, Still be so what I want to talk to you about, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the Bible in a moment. Now I'm not going to bore you too long, but I want you to think about something for me. This is four types of sunflowers. So I'm going to plant these, and I'm hoping to get some carrots. What do you think? That's good. Sunflower seeds. Can I get carrots? Not going to happen. Why? So I would have to use a different seed? How about this one? Can I get carrots from a mustard seed? No, you get mustard. <laughs> what's, what's my point? My point is Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. You got it, haven't you? Already. God is not mocked for whatever one sows. That will also reap. Whatever you sow is what you will reap. So if I sow these and I want carrots, it's not going to work. We go to Genesis. Somebody's going to read Genesis for me. Which Genesis? Oh. oh, he's on it. Look at that. The first one, right? It's really important that you listen. God, many times in the Bible, talks about seeds. Planting seeds. We reap what we sow. Genesis 1. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. And it talks about what we sow. Okay, I'll read uh, Genesis 3, 1 through 7. <clears throat> Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. In this case, serpent is indicative of the devil. So the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God Yahweh had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, all of them, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Must you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw, and she looked at the tree and saw it was good for food, that it was also pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves together. And I would submit one last thing. When they were naked, they became undone. That they had the knowledge that they had done wrong for the first time in all of creation. That they had a conscience that they had done sin and evil and broken God's word. So God said to Eve, if you eat from that tree, there are two trees in the garden. Forgive my artistic work, but it's beautiful. <coughs> Two trees in the garden. One is a tree of life. One is a tree of knowing good and evil. Why did God give a choice to Adam and Eve? Why couldn't he just put the tree of life there for them and not give them the opportunity to choose? Why do you think? We have a choice. I think we have a robot. Because God loves 
us so much that he wants us to love him freely. When you love someone, you don't want to hurt them and cause them harm and, and, and force them to love you. Know, I said to my son not too long ago, I said, if I went down and got this girl that you're hooked on, um, she's kind of not ready for a relationship, but I brought her here and I chained her to your chair so you can love her. Would that work? <laughs> don't think so? No. No. Slavery. Incarceration. We're, we're, we're slaves to sin. We're slaves to going to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But God gives us a choice. He gives us a chance to choose the tree of life. Does anyone know what the tree of life is? <clears throat> it's the tree of life. Jesus. Jesus. So that's the whole message on deliverance. We, we want to, to we, don't, we can go down that road. We're held hostage, we're incarcerated, we're, we're held bound, bound to all these kinds of harmful things. What is it the scripture said? What you sow, you will reap. I have to sow. I think all these guys said the same thing, didn't they? Yeah. In your illustration, every one of these guys already had Galatians 6, 7 memorized, because when you ask them the question, what they all say? You're going to get a carrot out of it. You're going to get a sunflower seed. That's they right. already had the principle written on their heart. That's right. The principle yeah. is, what you sow, you shall reap. So what happened in the garden that day? The serpent came along. Isn't it easy to be, we call it beguiled or tricked or deceived? Hmm. Did he word it different? Did God really say, did God really say that you're going to die? Oh, you're not going to die. Come on, you're not going to die. Did God really say, what did God mean when he said, if you eat from that tree, you will surely die? Because there's, there's a snake inside the apple. No. Good, good thought, though. No. Because what we sow, we will reap. Get this principle now. If I sow kindness, what am I going to reap? Kindness. If I sow anger, what am I going to reap? So let's take anger. It's anger is on anger. So whatever I plant is what I'm going to grow. I think that's what God is saying to me. I have to choose what it is I want to plant with my life. So you go down this path and you figure out, well, maybe the, I didn't get to kind of a happy life, troubles, pain, suffering. You guys aren't here because you, you know, but you, there's got to be a reason you're in this place. We didn't make the best choices. <laughs> <laughs> but you can change that. And that's the whole principle of Jesus. You can choose the tree of life. So what does that mean to choose the tree of life? To start your life over. It means to start going in a different way. So if I'm a very angry person and I want to destroy, changing that would mean I would be what? I would be loving, kind, good. It would be changing, a transformation. The Bible says that we're, we're transformed. You guys ever get your kids or have a transformer? Yes. Oh, yeah. Love and, transformer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it looks like this, and then all of a sudden, and it's entirely different. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, if you follow me, if you follow me, if you seek the tree of life, which is goodness, kindness, and all the good stuff that God wants us to be, if you follow that, you will be transformed. You'll be changed. Do you believe that you can be changed? Of course, that's... Yeah, you should believe. This is a young man who sold drugs and missions. He's a pretty bad dude for a while, this guy. And his mother was on the streets of Vancouver. And she was pretty in a pretty low place. She went up one night, they, were, they had some hot dogs available. She thought, well, I'm hungry, I'll go get a hot dog. But in the process of that, she heard about the transforming love of Jesus Christ. She, she heard about... Jesus, who hung on a cross and was brutalized <coughs> to save her soul. That would be a sick necklace. Pardon? That would be a sick necklace. The woman became, the woman was transformed. 
Now, here's the interesting thing about that woman. It's the mother of this young man. Do you see this beautiful Bible I have, this cover? Yes. This woman, who was on the street of Vancouver, got Christ in her life, turned around from the life she was living, but she is the chief at Haida Kwai. Kwai now. Did I pronounce that right, Haida Kwai? Yes. She's the chief there. Wow. This is a cover she made me. It's all leather. I, had, I just treasure it. But she said to God, she had gotten Jesus, and she said, I'm not going to be the chief. I don't want to be with those people. And God put in her heart and her mind, those are my people too. They're my people too. Now, she married an evangelist that was there, who turned out to be Peter's mother and father. This is Peter. He's a drug dealer in Mission. His life was totally chaotic. He is now a doctor in Calgary. Now, let me tell you a little bit of his testimony. When he was little, he saw a car flipped over in water, and he was with his mother, and the people drowned. And he said, that'll never happen to me, Mom, because I'd get out of that vehicle. Never. One night, when they were out doing their business in mission, the car went out of control and ended up in water, and they were drowning. He was drowning. His testimony's in here. You're welcome to see it later. And Peter, whose mother now had been transformed, turned her life around, married a man who believed in Jesus and the transforming love and power of Jesus. This young man said, Peter said, I'm drowning, I'm going to die, so if this thing is real, this Jesus thing is real, my father is God, and you saved my life, I will, trans I will let you transform and turn my life in another direction. Peter is so testimony today. He's a doctor in Calgary. This is a powerful book. <laughs> Three pounds of fat equals your life and destiny. His testimony is in here. Now, here, here's the whole thing. He goes now and plants seeds that says you, 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 me, we have an opportunity to the shed blood of Jesus Christ to go down a different path. We can eat from the tree of life, but you have to choose. You can keep eating from the tree of good and bad, knowing good and evil. Hey, no one's telling you you'd stop, but you have to want to. Just like Peter's mother, she wanted something different in her life, and she got that. And she got that. There are testimonies everywhere. They're here. They're, there's one. There's one. There's testimonies where we have been not walking according to following Jesus. Jesus is the tree of life. What does he want us to be like? What does Jesus want you to be like? Angels. No. You, are, you're, you know, I, I had a note. It says anger transference. It's a transfer, a transformation. Our God is a God of reconciliation. We are all, even if you're not behind bars, you're behind bars. Mm -hmm. Because you're captured by your life and you're in your life choices. You're in a prison, even if you're not in a reality prison. I can understand that. Like, I felt like that when I was uh, watching the heroin, right? And then, uh, I got arrested. It was so weird. I felt like I was free. You know? Felt like you were. I felt like I was free because like, they they tried to bail me out, and then I messed it up. And then the next time they tried to bail me out, and I was told them to leave me in here because like uh, save you from yourself. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, that is the answer I haven't heard in a long time. Is Jesus died to save us from ourselves, mm -hmm. because we can't do it. We need someone greater than us, yeah. greater than our spirit and our own selfish nature and desires to do it. That, I love that testimony. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Yeah, yeah when, I, when I go to jail, God talks to me, and that's when I feel free. Nothing can really hold me, because... Even behind bars, even when you're locked behind bars, you can have so a freedom. You can have a freedom because the freedom is. Yeah, the freedom comes. Before I was saved, I didn't really understand repentance at all. Um, and I made mistakes in my life. 
and I didn't want to live the life I was living. I didn't want to be with my children's father. You know, it was a very horrible situation. It was like I was drowning, and I didn't understand. You know, I made choices to stay with him because we had children. And I thought, that's what God wants me to do because, you know, we weren't married, and I sinned, and now we have kids. And that, so I thought I had to continue on that path. I didn't realize that repentance is you say, no, that's wrong, and you could get up. I could get up and leave that relationship and raise my children truly the way God wants me to. And I felt like I was trapped. Like, I was miserable until I realized, you know, what repentance was taught to me. It's making the right choices. You don't have to continue on your path just because you make 12 wrong choices, one wrong choice. You can stop and turn around. And God's always there to take you back and to teach you. That's beautiful, Hope, because what happened here in the garden was this. God had already planned. See, we can't get back to the tree of life because they messed up. They chose the tree of knowing good and evil. <laughs> and they chose to, dis to doubt God. Mm -hmm. You know, did God say you're going to die? You're not going to die. Yeah, but she wasn't dying. She would have died. She would have lived. They wouldn't have died at all. However, she died spiritually that day. And when she died spiritually, she cut herself off from the, the tree of life. She cut herself off from God. So Jesus, God had purposed that he took all of our sins when he hung on that cross. I know that's hard to believe. But I want to tell you, my friend back there, I forgot your name already. Andrew. Andrew, if you were the only person in this world, let me tell you that Jesus would have hung on that cross so that you could be restored back to the tree of life, to the love and the purpose of God. See, God has a destiny for you, Andrew. He does. He has a destiny for each one of us. But we have a choice. We can stay here and live the way we want to live. We can choose to do that because he gives us free will. He doesn't force us. You don't force someone to love you. I tie my son's girlfriend up in a chair. That's, not, that's forcing her. That's, that's not free will. Hmm. God gives us free will. And we can choose to stay here. We don't, he doesn't tell us that we, you know, come on over here. I want to give you guys uh, life and life abundantly because I love you. No. But through Jesus, through the sacrifice that Jesus did, is our bridge over. Right here. I was reading this book one time. Yeah. I was talking about, he said, he said you don't know you have God until all, all you have is, all you have left is God. And that's, the, and that's the place to be, is when you have nowhere else to go, and there's nobody there, and there's nobody human flesh that can help you. There's only God. And many men. This woman I told you about, I met her. She is amazing. Peter's mother. She had nowhere else to go. Now she's the chief at Hyde Quiet. Now her son is now a doctor who was dealing drugs and he was a pretty bad dude. Can you change? Can you be transformed? The second one said is really good. This one guy said that you don't really find God until you have nowhere else to go. Yeah is the reality is the root is pride mm -hmm. that if we think we can choose we can we can figure our own way we can decide our own thoughts we're so smart we got this handled i'm strong enough i'm smart enough i'm capable mm -hmm. enough i have enough angles i can work this he'll let you he'll give you you have all the free will and enough rope to hang yourself and the sooner we realize that we're hanging ourselves yeah the sooner we humble ourselves and say, Oh God, I don't want to do it anymore. Can you direct me? Can you lead me? Can I be your, can I submit myself into your love instead of a cold prison to keep me from my own damaging actions? Because pride, pride is the biggest enemy. He goes, if you humble yourself, he'll lift you up in his way and do the transformation. Pride will keep you in the tree of death. And I see it as going down. I always, you guys heard me talk about Darth Vader. I do that for a purpose. Do Dar again. Yeah, Darth Vader. You know, <laughs> you know that guy, the big black dude with the open on. Yeah, and you know what? You notice something about him? You notice something about him? He has no emotions. Control. <laughs> Control. 
control. He just wants to control. He wants to destroy. He has nothing good in him except that he is full of pride. And so he wants to take anybody he can into that darkness with him. That's Satan. Spielberg is a Jewish dude, right? Pardon? Spielberg. He's a, Jew, he's a Jewish dude. It's George Lucas. No, so, uh, oh, George Lucas. so who, yeah, is, Spielberg is who is the guy with the lightsaber? In the movie, there are lots of them. <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker, the only one who takes on in the dark, right? And that, and I know that's a simple way to say to you: you have to choose. Either I follow this way, or I follow this way. But nobody's going to make the choice. And if you get tired and sick and tired enough, why has this program worked over the years? Okay, let's go there. Step one. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Step one, Romans chapter 7, verse 18. I know nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what I do, but I cannot carry it out. There's a what? force, I can't, I want to do it. Verse 18. Right. Yeah, Romans 7, verse 18. You got it? I, Romans, Romans chapter seven, 7 verse 18. I'll give you guys, you guys get ready. I'll give you another one. Step 2. Who wants step 2? Uh, Philippians chapter 2. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Let's hope. Philippians <clears throat> chapter 2 is God who works in you. I'm just going to give a few of these out. Step 3. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Somebody get Romans what chapter 12 verse Philippians. 1. And know his will and approve what is ex excellent because you are instructed from the law. What? Which one did you read? Romans chapter 2, 12. verse 18. Romans, Romans 12, 18. what? Yeah, 7, 18. Seven 18. 18. What? You're going to read Go Romans? Over. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. What? Yeah. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers. For I know nothing. By the mercies of God. To present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, accept acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And step three says you make a decision to turn your will and your life over to the care of God. I'm not going to read all of these, but I made a couple of copies. <coughs> uh, step seven, how we ask them to remove our shortcomings. Who wants to read 1 John 1 9? First John, it's way at the back. I'll, I'll, ring, I'll read Romans chapter 7, 18. Okay. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Only with God's help. Yeah. Because we, we were programmed to go in that other direction. Okay. Pride. Okay. Uh, pleasures of life. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a... a um, a part of our brain that, that wants to direct us to pleasure. Yes. And that pleasure could lead us to death. Many people have died. There's people right now that didn't make it through till this morning. Yes. They're gone. Where are they in eternity? Where have they gone? So what am I saying to you today? What you sow is what you reap. Galatians chapter 6. What are you going to plant with your life? And what are you going to get out of it? So you have family. This, this family here turned their lives around. Now they're going around and they're trying to tell people, hey, this is possible. You don't have to be going down. You don't have to be held in hostage and slavery and bondage and incarceration. We're incarcerated even with our own self and our own sinful nature. Jesus brings us freedom. Amen. And, and that's what it's about. It's about freedom. I choose to love Jesus. Why? Because when I choose to love him, my life becomes a lovable life. Because I try to follow his example and his, and his word. His word brings life. Let me tell you, this word in here is life to those, to those who find it. And we're going to hear a testimony very soon of someone who found the word that brought life to his, his life. 
he knows what incarceration and being locked away is all about. So you guys are, you get my message here, what do you sow, and whatever you sow is what you're going to get. So if I sow kindness and goodness, I'm going to reap that. If I sow, if I sow mean and, 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 and judgment and criticism, what am I going to get back? Criticized and judged. It's going to come right back at me. It's like a yeah. So you guys, uh, spiritual awakening and the result of the steps, I had a very deep anger at my father. Very deep anger. And I didn't know it because it was locked into almost like a vault within me. When I did the steps, faithfully, I didn't want to do them, but I had a lady that, you listen to her or else. And I did the steps just to get her off my back, but I found out that I had an anger inside of me for my father. And I had a spiritual awakening that I saw my father in a dream, and I saw him in the middle of a room, and in this dream, I wrapped my arms around him, and I felt for the first time I, a hug, a love for my dad. I believe it was three years later that I, I went home to Nova Scotia and found my father, my sister and brother that were there, and that dream, that spiritual awakening became a reality. I had my dad in front of me, my arms around him, and the most beautiful feeling of love that I'd never known in my life. Jesus, Jesus has the ability to take the damage of our life and turn it into something beautiful. Amen. Amen. I, I can only testify to you that we're no different than you are. Nope. We're no different. We're, we're human flesh. People get me annoyed. Do you think I don't think thoughts like, whoa, well, boy, man, if I were back in those days, woo, you wouldn't be standing there. But God says, God says, love the one who love those people who hurt you. Here's something interesting. Say you want to say something very mean to me. Very mean. And instead of, instead, yeah, instead of me standing here and saying, hey, come on, come on. No, what if I said to you, you must be no love. I'll you. Sean. Sure. Huh? Sean, you must be hurting really bad and in a lot of pain because I know that you're not that angry with me. So you must be feeling very angry at yourself inside. Can I help you with that? Is, is, that, is, that, is there anything I can do to help you with that? You, see, you get my point? Yeah. I can either do this or I can reach out my hand, Sean. Take my hand. Just, and say, I'm your friend. It's okay. But I have to choose. Are you following me? Yep. What did I just sow with John? Friendship. Love. Carrots. Love. Carrots. <laughs> 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 you get my point? The only way that I can do that, the only way, trust me in this, guys, there's no human way that you can do what I just did with John. But to the love of God, when you find out that he loved me that much, he loved you that much, he loved you that much, you begin to want to love others. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a That's sowing good. and reaping principle. Yeah, people are always angry. They're never usually angry over the situation. There's a lot We've got something power. So, yeah. I brought these because this was a seed <laughs> that was planted. <laughs> Pink and black. Remember this, that what you sow is what you will reap. You sow anger, you're going to reap. Amen. You sow kindness, you're going to reap. You can't even be mad at me anymore. So we, we hold ourselves bondage and incarcerated just by our own decisions in life. You guys are beautiful people, and God loves each one of you. And let me tell you once again, if you're the only one, the only one on this earth, one of you, Jesus would have still suffered and died to save you and to bring you back to the tree of life, to abundant life. Amen. Love you. Bless you. The scriptures with the steps. Somebody wanted it? I think so. Amen. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity, guys. Yeah. And you guys are awesome sitting there, oh, yeah. <laughs> sitting there listening. Praise the Lord. Oh. Yeah. Well, you guys are so Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. How many of you guys ready for a man? Well, let's just give Mr. Lord's another hand.
you know what? Sometimes we think that, you know what, we don't have something to say. But you know what? God is here to use every vessel that is willing to be used. And Miss Dolores, even at 75 years of age, still feels the call and the love. Rather than sitting in the retirement home or on the beach of Maui, kicking back and enjoying the latter years of her life, her calling on her life is to come out, work at the Salvation Army, not even at the Salvation Army. She works, you know, in the shelter where all the homeless guys are sleeping and all the drug addicts are coming in, all of that stuff. The nasty hey, place. Hey, but, you know what, but you know what I'm saying, you know? It, it's not the nicest place. But Miss Dolores, rather than kicking back on a sunny beach somewhere, has a love for the people. She's but she's saint. there, and she's here, and she's loving on you guys. Because God uses us as vessels, and she's put a, he's put a calling in her life, even at age 75. She's a wonderful yeah. person. Praise God. I want to see each one of you. I want to see each one of you in heaven. I do not ever want anyone to ever go through the abyss and into this lake of fire. You guys, work on it, trust the Lord, and follow good direction because that's what it's all about. It is. Thank you. Because the Word of God says, wide is the road to destruction, and narrow is the way to God. And few find it. But God, you know, this is what I like to think is that Jesus... He's sitting right here at the entrance, and he's got a little sign up, and he's waving, this way, this way, but we still choose to keep walking and ignore what he has to say. Because they're blind from self-will, pride, ego. That, you, you've called it.